Hey everybody, uh, this is Lewis Porter Jr. So today is the 2nd of March and this video I kind of just popped up literally in like three seconds. So I read something that kind of made me go, hmm, that's weird. Of course on the Paizo forums. So I'm on the forums and somebody's asking about, you know, would you support an international Kickstarter or group, group funding? And one guy goes, says, yes, if the company was, if the company was honest and then, and I like the product, yes, I don't. But since it's third party, I don't, I won't, I wouldn't be interested. And it got me thinking in two phases. One phase being the Kickstarter phase, which I'll talk about in a second. The other one being the I won't play third party phase. I still don't understand that. I, 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 I'll never understand that. People say, oh, I can't play third party because it's not officially Paizo. And to me, it's funny because half the people that started in third party work at Paizo now or have some kind of interaction. Case in point, Owen Casey Stevens. He has, you know, a ton of products with his line, Super Genius. And then people saying, oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play his stuff. But then he writes for Paizo. Oh, of course, it's fantastic. And it's like, it's official because Owen writes for them. It's official. And it's like, that's kind of silly. I mean, that's kind of limiting, first of all. That's just a kind of silly. And I mean, you know, third party publisher, I don't understand that. If a product's good, a product's good. If it works, it works. You know, Bruce Lee said, you know, take what you need, don't use the rest. I mean, that's the whole gimmick. I think that's the whole gimmick that I feel when we're talking about third-party publishing and things like that. It's like, find something that works for you, then use it. Now, the other side of the, the statement was the whole Kickstarter thing. And everyone's been talking about Kickstarter, Kickstarter. I mean, I, I've been talking about Kickstarter. But what I've noticed, and I have to agree to what I've heard from other guys who've done very successful Kickstarter projects, it's, you know, people think, okay, I just put it online and people come and they give me money. And it's, no, it's not that. It's, I build a connection with people. Then I give them a reason to buy. Then I get the support. And people are kind of trying to put their cart before the horse. Now, I did that too. Don't, don't let it fool you. I did that too. I did, remember, I had th I've done three Kickstarters. Two of them, flops. The first one, pseudo flop. Well, not, it was a flop, but it wasn't as bad as the second one. The second one, that was a flop. This new one, success. Woo! You know, so I'm one for three. You know, in baseball, I'd be, a, you know, a great player, but I'm you know, one for three. I think a lot of people need to understand, it's great you want to do a Kickstarter project. You see all these guys making millions of dollars of stuff like this, but you forget that these guys have built these organizations and built these fan bases around themselves before they get the Kickstarter. Um, there's a third-party publisher who announces that he's coming out with a, with a Kickstarter project. And he's never put anything else before. He's never done anything. He hasn't. He doesn't have any experience. And I've even mentioned to him, I'm like, dude, put at least something free before you do a Kickstarter. So at least people know your name. And they can see, say, oh, he did this, and I read that, and I like that. Or go, I'll support him. But he doesn't even want to do that. And I think to myself, I'm like, wow, talk about putting yourself on the eight ball. And people get caught up in the, in the whole hype of, well, it's a great product. And this is a great product, people are going to want to buy it. You know, there's tons of products that are considered to be great that no one buys. And there's tons of things that people, that are absolute crap. The pet rock. But people buy tons of them. So, you know, the quality of the product is just part of it. Connecting with your customer, that's the important part. And he, I mean, I guess he's trying to do that. But as a third-party publisher, I, I, I'm just going to give you my opinion. It's better to release something free so they can see what you're capable of and what you plan or even what your mindset is than just to go cold turkey because that's a, that's a very serious uphill battle I, that's just me I mean I'm just telling you from my point of view I think Kickstarter is a great way to get projects off the ground I mean we're doing our second one well t uh, we're hoping for our second successful one in uh, wow 13 days um, we're going to be doing Order of Man of course for New Exodus we did very well with um, Undying Undying Legacy which is actually being play tested on Monday at, uh, what's that, Enchanted Grounds in Denver. So if you happen to be in that area, stop on by. JP will be running this as a play test, so if you just happen to be there. But, I, you know, I think you really have to work at making it a successful Kickstarter. I think you have to do things to make it successful. Gary Sarka did a lot of great stuff on Far West, and he did that way before it ever came on to Kickstarter. He built that community. He built that interest. He built, you know, people talking about it. And I think that's a good thing. The problem is too many people see the money. They think, oh, money, they made a million dollars. I'll make a million dollars. And then you get this rush to Kickstarter. You know, instead of thinking about, you know, 
how to be a good Kickstarter guy. Think about how you can be a good setting guy or a good world guy. I mean, we're doing Kickstarter as kind of a way to expand what we're doing and also cut cost. Because adventures are expensive. And, you know, one person buys an adventure and six people play it. You know, that's kind of a bad business model. What you want to have is one product, you know, you make one product and everyone buys it. Case in point, the Pathfinder Core rule book or, well, that's, one, that's probably number one. The Beastie area. You know, if you're serious in the monsters, that's going to do pretty well. Uh, the Game Mastery Guy. You know, and then there's the other books that you may or may not get. Like I have, okay, I got a copy of Ultimate Combat and Ultimate Magic in my bookshelf. Which I'm surprised I bought Ultimate Magic because I like magic users, but I don't love magic users. But I love combat. So, but once again, pieces of it were in, in that I needed, and I said, let me buy it. I don't think everybody bought those books, but not a lot of people did. So, uh, build your build your company first. Build the connection first. Build the interest. Get people interested in what they want to see and what they want to do. Um, that's really what it's about. It's about building that connection, and I think some people don't spend time doing that. They assume I've come out and I'm going to be, you know, successful just because I'm here. And, okay, it's good that you came out, you've made a product. That's that's huge in itself. Don't, don't let me downplay that. But at the same time, you really have to go out there and connect. That's what it's really about, is connecting with your customers. Um, that's really the best way I could put it. Um, now for that. Now for something cool that's totally, you know, non-related. So I happen to be at one of my local game stores over at Tate's, where Tate's is a comic book store and a game store. I used to work at the game store. And I was happened to be in there, and I was looking at their Game, tra- game Trade magazine, which was very, very cool. And I saw this little preview. Now, I know it's starting to get around, so I said, let me do a video on this so people can understand. Um, if you're going to be doing... Or, uh, put this up here. This is a preview sheet for the upcoming Pathfinder Advanced Race Guide. It's coming out, I believe, they have listed as April, but I think I decided it's like June, so I'm going to assume July. <laughs> you know, that's just the way it goes. They've got a two-page sheet of, of the Durger. I'm pronouncing that wrong because I have horrible pronunciation, but it's uh, the infamous Dark Dwarves. Thank you. Got this from a store, so it was nice enough. Also, quick little moment. Over at Tate's Gaming Satellite, they had the magazine. I happened to see it and go, oh, this is very cool. Are you selling it? It's like, no, we can't sell it. It's the only copy I've got. How about if I make you a photocopy of it? And I'm like, oh, great. Photocopy. Boom. Now, I know them pretty well, and they know me, so it's not a big deal for them to do a photocopy. But it's nice they offered. And that's, you know, a little moment of customer service to think about. Little things that make it important. Uh... What was I? I was talking about? Yes, the book is actually, it looks very interesting. You can also download it off of um, Alliance's website. They have a link for it. It's a PDF for all you people who are interested in seeing, want to see the stat right up. Boom, boom. Get your own copy. It's available there. I think it'll give you a good taste of what's going to be in that book. And God knows, I'm picking up that book because I make a lot of races. And God knows, I make a lot of races. Just something you should pick up. I think it's a good book. But. Um, well, let's go back to Kickstarter. As you see, it's early in the morning, so I'm still groggy. I I hope a lot of people get more and more involved with, with Kickstarter and what's going on with Kickstarter and getting those projects out. I mean, it's great that people are wanting to do cool projects and want to support cool projects. I think mean, that's the other part of it, too. The more people doing this makes it more solid and trustable. Trustable, is that even a word? Trustworthy? Trustable? Ah. It's kind of like when RPG Now came out with PDFs. A lot of people were like, oh, PDFs, scoff. Oh, no, they'll never sell. They'll never make money. Now everybody does PDFs for sale, but they know, hey, people buy them. I think it's interesting to see the business model change. I mean, I remember when, was it, Meat Bot Massacre came out under the um, hostage funding idea. You know, if we make enough money, I'll release this product. And that was a very cool business model. And I think that kind of evolved into this whole crowdsourcing. And there's so much, there's so many different ways to do business now, but really always goes back to building that community. If you focus on that, you do pretty well. All right, I gotta go because I gotta eat breakfast and I gotta 
I actually have a job interview today for some freelance work. We'll see how that turns out. I'll talk to you all later. Have a good day.